All right, I'm back with my pink post-it notes. Um, you may be wondering why I'm using these. It's because I couldn't find any paper here in Ontario. So these are gonna work for now. Uh, we are still talking about one step um, equalities. We are trying to solve for that one individual variable. So we had to use some inverse operations to figure out what these individual variables actually equal. So um, as per the, the, the video we had before that was dealing with addition and subtraction, just a few things to remember that that equal sign means that everything on the left side equals everything on the right side. That's the basis of all equalities. We're assuming that this is true, that that is 100% fact that all of this equals all of that. All right, cool. So right now, x is being times by five. It's five times x. Whenever we have a coefficient touching a variable, the implied operation is multiplication. So it's five times x right now. So to get rid of time, five times x, we have to use the inverse. What's the inverse or the opposite of multiplication? Well, that is division. So there's two ways I can write this. One way that I prefer and want you to, uh, you guys to actually do. Um, I'll do it the second way. This is the first way you can do it, and this does work. There's nothing wrong with this. This is completely accurate. I can write it like this. 5x divided by 5, negative 45 divided by 5. This is just a bit more work that I'd rather have you guys doing. We want to be efficient. We do not want to be redundant. Okay, I'd rather have you write it like this. 5x divided by 5. Remember this line makes it look like a fraction. Remember that fractions are really just two terms, one dividing, one being divided by the other. So this line is saying division. So 5x divided by 5. We're dividing by 5 because that's the inverse of multiplied by 5. We're going to use that to cancel those out, have x drop down, equal sign drop down, and we're getting ahead of ourselves because we forgot to divide by 5 over here. If we're divided by 5 on the left side, we have to, have to, have to divide by 5 on the right side so that it is still equal. It's still fair. I could if I wanted to. I don't know why I would, but if I wanted to, I could divide this by a million. But I'd have to divide it by a million over here too to make it fair, to maintain that it's equal. But I'm going to divide by 5 because that makes more sense. I'm using the inverse of times by 5 to cancel it out. Now I've isolated x. Hooray. I have a negative being divided by a positive. We have an odd number of negatives, so I know my answer is going to be negative. Hooray for integer rules. 45 divided by 5 is 9. Circle my answer, as is tradition. Boom, done. One step equality. Let's do another. Let's crush this. I'm trying to solve for x. I want x by itself, but right now it has negative 2 timesing it. Let's use the inverse of timesing by negative 2. That, of course, would be dividing by negative 2. Got to do it on both sides, so it's fair. These cancel. X drops. Equal sign drops. 11 divided by 2. Oh, pardon me. Odd number of negative symbols. This will be negative. <clears throat> 11 divided by 2 is 5 and a half, or 5.5, or 5 and 5 tenths. Circle it. Make sure it's legible. Good. All right, now, a little bit more tricky. Well, maybe debatable. Could be a little bit more tricky. Um, we have h divided by 20. Okay, this is what this is telling us. h divided by 20 is equal to negative 3. Well, I want h by itself. I have to use inverse operations. I'm dividing by 20, so the inverse of that is, yep, you guessed it, times by 20. Got to do it on both sides so it's fair. These cancel. h drops. Equal sign drops. Negative 30 times 20 is negative 60. Cool. Now, you might be thinking, like, well, I don't know. It makes sense, but I'm not 100% confident that that actually worked. Let's actually check our work. We can put negative 60 in for that H and see if this is legit. So let's start out with that. Oops, someone's honking out there. Let's, um, let's rewrite that equation. H divided by 20 is equal to negative 3. We said that our answer was negative 60. So I'm going to put negative 60 in for H. Negative 60 over 20 is equal to negative 3. <clears throat> it's supposed to be a 3. We have a negative, or sorry, an odd number of negatives, so my answer is definitely going to be negative. 60 divided by 20 is 3 equal negative 3. Check it out. She works. Boom. 
I could do that for all of these, but I think you guys get the point. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Beefing it up a little bit. We're still trying to solve for x. I want x by itself. We gotta get that variable isolated, it equaling whatever it actually equals. And right now, what this is telling us is that it's negative one-third times x, okay? So negative one-third times x. So I gotta do the inverse of this. Well, what's the inverse of timesing by negative one-third? Well, you guessed it. Divide by negative one-third. Now, you might be thinking, Mr. Lewis, you are being a hypocrite. You said don't use that symbol way back here. Well, the reason I'm using it now is because I'm dividing by a fraction. So if I drew the line and put a fraction underneath of it, it just gets kind of tricky because there's, there's a whole bunch of lines happening. So this is the one instance where I'd say use that division symbol. This make it a bit more clean. So I'm dividing by negative one third. I'm gonna go ahead and put some brackets around it just to help my eyes understand that this is all one term together. I'll do that over here too, to make sure it's fair, equal. We're doing equalities after all, it's gotta be equal. Cool, these will cancel. X will drop, equal sign will drop. 10 divided by negative one third. Well, this gets a little bit tricky. I definitely can't just do this in my head. I'm going to write out this, uh, this number sentence. So I've got 10 divided by negative one third. Cool. Well, we have to remember back to our fraction operations. When I'm dividing a whole number by a fraction, first step, turn that whole number into a fraction. And we know it's 10 whole numbers, so 10 over one or 10 wholes, divided by negative one third. Cool, next step. I still have 10 over one. I'm going to flip the division into multiplication, and I'm going to flip negative one third to its reciprocal so that the denominator and the numerator change spots, they just flip. So it's negative three over one. Cool. And now I just do some fraction operations. I've got a negative, um, I got a negative number of, sorry, I've got an odd number of negatives. So I know my answer is gonna be negative. 10 times three is 30. One times one is one. Cool. And now I'm kind of out of space here. So you have to forgive me. This should be below, but I don't want to write on the table. So this is going to be x is equal to negative 30. There's my answer. A few more steps than the other questions. You betcha there definitely are. Okay, but this is all just relying on that prior knowledge we've learned in grade seven as well as this year, those fraction operations, being able to divide fractions. Are these more tricky? Yep, for sure, but can you do them? 100%, let's practice. <clears throat> okay, the last one. Um, we are dealing with mixed numbers now. A mixed number, of course, has a whole and a fraction combined. This is two and a half. What we're saying is two times whatever this variable represents is equal to two and a half. Well, first step before we are actually able to solve this is to turn that mixed number into an improper fraction. So I've got two holes, there's two parts in each of them, so two times two is four, plus that one remaining part, that's gonna be five halves, or five over two, okay? Now I can isolate x. I've got two times x, well the inverse of two times, that of course would be divide by two, okay? Now you kinda see what I mean over here when I said you want to use the division symbol because if I do the line, it gets kind of ugly with fractions. You can imagine if I did a line there and then divide by two. It gets tricky. So I'm going to do the little division symbol. Divide by two there. These cancel. X drops. And now I've got five halves divided by two. Okay, well, we are dividing by a whole number. First step is to turn that whole number into a fraction, which is as easy as putting a one underneath of it. Done. Next step, five halves remains. Division is flipped to multiplication. Two over one is flipped to its reciprocal, which is one over two. And I'm, you know, I'm gonna go like this, put it up over here, just so for more space. Okay, now I just multiply. Five times one, oh, pardon me, x drops, equal sign drops. Five times one is five, two times two, is four. Let's turn that into a mixed number just for, you know, fun, I guess. <laughs> four goes into five. 
one whole time with a remainder of one fourth. That's my answer, circle it. More steps in the other questions? You betcha, but is it easy to do? Well, maybe not easy to do, but is it possible to do? Yep, for sure. And you guys are gonna crush these. Have fun.